Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, what I'm going to do is cover the hostname command. Hostnames on your Linux server, that's an important concept to understand in and of itself, but the hostname command allows us to read our hostname, change our hostname, so it's definitely important to learn. And I'm also going to throw in another command towards the end of the video that's also important to learn that has to do with hostnames. Now, before we get into that, though, I need to take a moment to mention the fact that I have a brand new course available. And this course is going to help you pass the Linux Essentials exam from LPI. With this 23 video course, you'll learn everything you need to know to get up to speed with Linux and of course pass that exam. You'll learn about Linux itself, Linux distributions, you'll get up to speed with command line basics, there's going to be tips along the way, there's all kinds of things that I have to teach you in this series and I can't wait for you to check it out and I hope you do. You'll learn about Linux distributions, the command line, networking, there's all kinds of things that I have to teach you in this course and I hope you check it out. But why should you buy my course? Well, Learn Linux TV is actually a partner of the Linux Professional Institute, so by learning from me, you're learning from someone who's literally involved with LPI. So definitely check out my Linux Essentials course. I would really appreciate it. Now, with all of that out of the way, it's time to get started and learn the hostname command. The basic usage of the hostname command is very simple. You simply type hostname just like that and press enter. And what that's going to do is return the host name of your computer. Mine is simply ThinkPad, although it says Learn Linux TV in the bash prompt where it normally shows the domain name or your host name. I took the host name away and made it say Learn Linux TV, so I don't want you to think that my host name is Learn Linux TV. That's just what I have in the bash prompt. But my host name, at least according to the host name command, is simply ThinkPad. Now that host name wasn't very exciting, so what I'll do right now is log into a more exciting server that has more going on. So what I'll do is log into the official server for Learn Linux TV. Let's take a look. And there we are. Now what I'll do is run the hostname command again. And as you can see, I get a lot more information. Well, technically I don't see more information. I see the same information. I see my hostname. But the hostname on this server is quite a bit different than my local workstation. I have a domain of learnlinux.tv. And the host name is going to be the beginning that starts with SRV. And the host name command, what that does is it prints the host name. Now, of course, there's more that we could do with the host name command, so there's more that I'm going to teach you, so let's continue. Okay, so where exactly is the host name stored? Well, if we take a look at the Etsy host name file, we should see the exact same thing. And we do. So now you know we could run host name to view the host name, or we could view the contents of Etsy host name because that's where the host name is going to be stored. Now, another file that I want to point your attention to is slash Etsy slash hosts. Every system should have this file. Essentially what this file is going to contain is a number of things here. It's going to have various domains that your server might be known as. I have a few different ones here. But anyway, when we have a host name, we want that host name in the Etsy host name file. And we also want that reflected in the Etsy host file. And the Etsy host file is going to be how we tell the server to respond to its own name. Now you don't have to know any more about these files than what I just told you. I have another video that covers host name resolution in more detail. I'll leave a card for that video right about here that'll teach you more about that. But at this point, all I want is for you to be aware of those files. And if you're aware of those files, we'll continue. Next, let's continue with the host name command. Now this part of the tutorial is going to be fairly interesting because I'm going to give you some options that you could give the hostname command to change it up a little bit, but some of these options I don't want you to use. Now I do want you to be aware of these options, but some of them you won't use and you'll use a different option instead. And the first example is going to be one of those examples of a deprecated option, the dash A option. So I'll press enter and it gives me my hostname. Now before, if I ran hostname by itself, it gave me my fully qualified domain name. And that's what that is right there. You have a domain name here. I have a domain name of learnlinux.tv. And then I have a host name, the one that starts with SRV. That's my host name, but the two combined, that represents the fully qualified domain name. 
Now, if this server was simply learnlinux.tv and there wasn't a host name, for example, let's say the host name was learnlinux.tv and the domain name is learnlinux.tv, then the fully qualified domain name would just be learnlinux.tv. However, since this server is part of the learnlinux.tv domain, it has a host name that's separated by a dot, but either way, we have a fully qualified domain name. So what we can see is host name by itself gives me the fully qualified domain name, but the dash A option only gives me the host name. Now, I mentioned that you shouldn't use that option though. So what I'll do is give you a replacement option that I want you to use instead anytime you want to achieve the same result. Now the first option, dash A, is going to show you your alias. Now you may or may not have an alias, which is why we don't want to use this option. And not only that, there's going to be other options that I'll show you later that's going to be better anyway. But dash A is something that comes up a lot when you go online to look for tutorials and things like that, so I definitely wanted to mention it. Now speaking of fully qualified domain name, if we run hostname and then dash F, what that's going to do is give us our fully qualified domain name. And there it is. But as you can see, when I run hostname by itself, I get the same information. So dash F is implied in this case, but you can, as an option, include dash F if you want to explicitly make sure that you see the fully qualified domain name within the output. The next option is another that I recommend that you don't use, but I do want you to be aware of it at least. And this one isn't always going to be accurate, which is why I don't want you to use it. But it can show you helpful information, so I guess you could write it down. But the option is hostname-i. As you can see, it's not really giving me anything very useful here. All it's doing is showing my local host IP address. Now instead of that option, what you could do is use dash uppercase I instead and watch what happens. We get IP address information. What that's showing you is the IP address that's associated with the host name on the system. Sorry to interrupt my own video, but I just wanted to let you know that I appreciate each and every single one of you and I love creating Linux related content for you guys. But unfortunately, producing high quality Linux content like this isn't cheap. But if you want to help me make even more content for you guys, then consider supporting Learn Linux TV. And a great way to do that is to check out the official shop for Learn Linux TV, which was just recently updated. Inside the shop, you'll find distro themed shirts, bags, drinkware, and more. And there's some other surprises there as well. For example, I've just introduced a mouse pad that doubles as a Tmux cheat sheet. How cool is that? So check out the shop at merch.learnlinux.tv or you can check out the merch shelf right here on YouTube. You could get yourself something really cool and support Linux learning at the same time, so it's a win-win. Anyway, thank you guys so much for your support. I really appreciate it. Now, let's get back to the video. So before, hostname-i, that just gave me my local host IP address, and depending on how you have yours configured, it might give you something else. But hostname-i gives us the information that I actually wanted, if what I wanted was the IP information that's associated with the hostname. So now you know the hostname command, but I'm not done yet because what I want to do is throw another command at you, hostname ctl. And the command looks basically like this, hostname ctl, also known as hostname control. Now, what I'm going to do is press enter and let's see what it does. Wow, take a look at that. It's giving me some information about my machine. This command is not only giving me my host name, it's giving me some additional information about my system as well. And I think this command is very useful. And just like other commands, there's other options that we can give hostname CTL to alter its behavior. But first of all, what exactly is hostname CTL? Why do we have the hostname command and we also have hostname CTL. Should you use one over the other? Should you learn both? What's going on here? Well, the first thing to know is that hostname CTL is part of systemd. So if you have a Linux distribution that features systemd as its init system, then you have this command. But if you are using a distribution that does not use systemd, then you probably don't have this command. So the first thing again is to know that this command is part of systemd. The hostname ctl command shows you some useful information for sure, but what else can you do with it? Well, what you could do is change your hostname. And to do that, what I'm going to do is exit out of this server because this is a production server and I definitely don't want to change my hostname here. So I'm back to my local computer. 
And what I could do is change my host name on this machine here. This is just a test installation anyway, so it should be safe. So what I'll do is change the host name. And to do that, we'll need to use sudo because to change a host name on any system, you definitely need root privileges here. So we'll run sudo and then hostname ctl. And then we'll give it the option set hyphen hostname. After that, what we'll do is give it a different name. Now, currently my host name is ThinkPad, but I could be a little bit more specific. Maybe I want to change its name so that it references the model as well. This is an X1 carbon, so I could put X1 hyphen carbon on that. And that's going to enable me to set my host name. I'll type in my password. And it didn't complain at least. Let's see what hostname CTO says. As you can see here, my hostname is ThinkPad X1 Carbon. Closer to the beginning of the video, I showed you that my hostname was ThinkPad on my local machine, and now I changed it to ThinkPad X1 Carbon, as you see here. But what about the Etsy hostname file? I mean, we just changed the hostname. Do we have to go and change it in Etsy hostname as well? Well, first of all, let's see what's inside it. Check it out. The hostname ctl command took care of updating this file for me. Now you could just go ahead and update this file yourself and change the hostname to whatever you want it to be. That does work. You don't have to use the hostname ctl command and the hostname ctl command does not replace the hostname command either. The hostname ctl command is an API through which you could change the hostname and that's exactly what we were able to do with it. Now it's great that it went ahead and updated this file for us, but Earlier, I mentioned that there were two files. The other file was slash Etsy slash hosts. I mentioned that that was another file that is important when it comes to hostname resolution. So did the command update that one as well? Well, let's see. No, it did not. You'll notice that this machine is still called ThinkPad according to Etsy hosts. We see that on the second line. So unfortunately, the hostname CTL command did not update Etsy hosts. Anyway, as you saw with the hostname CTL command, we can grab the hostname as well as some additional information, and we could also set the hostname as well. And there we go. I just taught you the hostname command, and I threw in the hostname CTL command as well, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please subscribe to Learn Linux TV for the latest in Linux, because I have all kinds of episodes coming in this series other videos that I plan on uploading. There's all kinds of things coming. So be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.